Robert Downey Jr. once said that his role in Less Than Zero hit uncomfortably close to home, even calling his drug-addicted character an exaggerated version of himself. The Iron Man star has since turned his life around, but getting there wasn't easy. Avant-garde filmmakers are not generally known to be the most pragmatic, level-headed people, and Robert Downey Sr. was no exception. Robert Downey Jr. has often mentioned the fact that his father introduced him to drugs, specifically marijuana at an extremely young age. The recollections of both men vary as to whether that age was eight years old or six, but it goes without saying that either is wildly inappropriate. In a profile in the 1988 book The New Breed, Actors Coming of Age, the then 23-year-old actor related how being raised around a culture of open drug use had already begun shaping his life. He said, It's so much easier to spend every night out getting drunk with the boys and making a thousand phone calls in pursuit of drugs than to stop and say, okay, what am I going to do tomorrow when I wake up late and it all just starts over again? Now I'm into sobriety by default. Of course, that was almost certainly not true at that time and would prove to ring extremely hollow in the years to come. For Downey Sr.'s part, he openly expressed regret for his actions in the 2022 documentary Sr., in which he was interviewed on a variety of subjects by his son. He said in the doc, It was an idiot move on our parts, a lot of us, to share that with our children. While filming the 1984 thriller Firstborn, he became involved with one of his co-stars, Sarah Jessica Parker. Parker, of course, would go on to success and acclaim as the star of features like Hocus Pocus and the iconic TV series Sex and the City. The pair quickly began dating, and in a 1985 piece for People magazine, even Robert Downey Sr. noted that the young actress had a profound influence on his son, saying, Without her, Robert would go at 100 miles an hour into a brick wall. They're very sweet together. He might become a gentleman as a result of this. Downey and Parker were virtually inseparable throughout the 80s, but in 1991, she ended the relationship. In a 2008 piece for Parade magazine, Downey was quite clear as to why, saying, I was so selfish. I liked to drink and I had a drug problem. And that didn't jibe with Sarah Jessica because it is the furthest thing from what she is. She provided me a home and understanding. She tried to help me. In 2015, during an appearance on The Howard Stern Show, Downey shared that he had finally had a chance to catch up with his old flame during a trip to New York, Downey told Stern. We were able to spend some time together and nice. it, was, it was really cool. The role that made critics sit up and take notice of Downey came in director Marek Kanievska's Less Than Zero, the 1987 adaptation of the Bret Easton Ellis novel. In the film, Downey portrayed Julian, the drug-addicted best friend of Andrew McCarthy's protagonist, Clay. For Downey, the role was suited to him in unfortunate ways. And in a 2003 piece for The Guardian, he cited the film as the point at which his personal drug issues began to snowball out of control. He told the outlet, Until that movie, I took my drugs after work and on the weekends. That changed on Less Than Zero. The character was an exaggeration of myself. Then things changed, and in some ways, I became an exaggeration of the character. Perhaps tragically, Downey would later say that Kanievska understood the similarities between Downey and Julian and pinned his hopes to the role being a cathartic experience for the actor, hopes that obviously failed to pan out. Speaking with the New York Times in 2023, Downey spoke philosophically about the situation, saying, Kanievska understood what I didn't, which is, we are doing something incredibly artistic. This guy is a mess, but he's not as bad as the character he's playing. Can he have an experience whereby it may spare him years of untold agony? The answer was no, but it was worth asking. I hope I can inspire other people. Despite his personal issues, Robert Downey Jr.'s star continued to rise in the 90s. He earned his first Oscar nomination for playing the title role in the 1992 biopic Chaplin and turned up in well-received roles in films like Shortcuts and Natural Born Killers. In 1996, though, it all began to come crashing down. In June of that year, Downey was pulled over for speeding in Malibu and was found to be under the influence of drugs. In the car were felony amounts of cocaine and heroin, not to mention an unloaded 357 Magnum revolver. Downey was arraigned on possession, DUI, and gun charges. But before the case could be resolved, he was arrested again in a bizarre incident that made for some sensational headlines. In the early morning on the day after his arraignment, he was taken into custody after mistakenly wandering into a neighbor's home while under the influence. Downey had then fallen soundly asleep in the bed of his neighbor's 11-year-old son. Speaking with the Los Angeles Times at the time, an anonymous agent at Downey's former agency said, Two drug arrests in a row? Yes, this can seriously damage your future in this town. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. Following arrests for drug-related charges in 1996, Downey was able to avoid jail, at least initially. He was sentenced to three years probation, spent several months in an inpatient treatment program, 
and was ordered to undergo random drug testing. In October 1997, though, his probation was revoked after he was found to have used drugs again. As a result, Downey was sentenced to six months in county prison by Judge Lawrence Mira. Mira told him during the hearing, I'm going to incarcerate you, and I'm going to incarcerate you in a way that's very unpleasant for you. I don't care who you are, what I care about is that there is a life to be saved from drugs. The troubled actor served his sentence and continued to work after his release, landing roles in such films as Two Girls and a Guy and U.S. Marshals. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, though, his experience in prison was not enough to deter him from falling back into his old ways. In 1999, Downey again violated probation by misusing drugs. After this latest violation, Downey had the misfortune of again appearing in front of Judge Lawrence Mira. Downey proceeded to make an impassioned plea to Mira, comparing his compulsion to use drugs to a death wish. He told the judge, It's like I've got a shotgun in my mouth with my finger on the trigger and I like the taste of the gunmetal. Mira, who had heard quite similar words from the actor in the not-too-distant past, was somewhat sympathetic but not swayed. Mira asked the actor's attorney, Is there any question that if this defendant continues to use drugs, we're going to be reading his name in an obituary? We tried rehabilitation and it simply hasn't worked. I don't think we have any alternative to a prison sentence. We have used them all. With that, the judge handed down his sentence, three years in state prison. Due to time previously served in jail and on parole, he ultimately spent a little over a year in North Kern State Prison in Delano, California. He would later tell The Hollywood Reporter that the facility was the most dangerous place he'd ever been to. Surprised to admit that when I was, you know, locked down in a, a California correctional facility, I said, wow, this is really not panning out for me. Upon his release from prison in 2000, it took Downey all of about a week to find his next acting gig. The David E. Kelly dramedy series Ally McBeal, starring Callista Flockhart, had been a smash hit after debuting in 1997, but by its third season, it was beginning to lose steam. Enter Downey, who accepted the role of Larry Paul, a new love interest for Flockhart's relationship-challenged attorney. The actor made his debut in the first episode of the fourth season. The series' ratings immediately spiked, and it looked like Downey might be on the comeback trail. However, the actor would later say that during this time, he was at a low point in his life. He told The Guardian in 2003, I'm probably not the best person to ask about that period. It was my lowest point in terms of addictions. At that stage, I didn't give a f whether I ever acted again. In November 2000, Downey had been picked up for drug possession in Palm Springs, California, just a month after the premiere of season four of Ally McBeal. He had pleaded innocent the following month, and the executives at Fox publicly expressed their confidence in their new star by signing him on for the rest of the season. Then, in April 2001, the actor was arrested wandering the streets of Culver City, California, while once again under the influence of drugs. His publicist issued an extremely brief statement announcing that Downey had checked himself into rehab. However, this time Fox execs were not so forgiving. It was immediately announced that Downey was done for the season. The following month, a producer on the show told Entertainment Weekly that Downey had not technically been fired, but that the series' creative team was looking at making some unspecified cast changes for the following season. Downey did not ultimately appear in the new season of the show. In October 2003, Downey was the focus of an article in the New York Times titled The Sobering Life of Robert Downey Jr. In the piece, it was noted that for the first time in seven years, Downey was not on parole or probation or in a court-enforced rehab program. However, although he was preparing to make a comeback in the lead role in the 2003 film The Singing Detective, he was very much living the life of a recovering addict. At the time, the actor was staying rent-free in a rundown house owned by a friend and getting into new, healthier diversions like yoga. Of course, his self-deprecating wit was on full display when asked about his mindset towards his newfound sobriety. Downey told the outlet, I guess sometimes I want to have a drink with dinner, but then I remember that I have plans for Christmas. The piece was a portrait of a man very much walking a razor's edge between his old self-destructive life and the new life that beckoned him, one that would finally allow him to fulfill his vast potential. If there is one thing that the world at large is likely to remember Robert Downey Jr. for, it's for inhabiting the role of Tony Stark, the invincible Iron Man. It was truly the role he was born to play, and the character's arc, from arrogant, self-centered weapons dealer to self-sacrificing savior of the entire universe, is one that only an actor of Downey's caliber could have pulled off. But if there is one other thing he is almost certain to be forever associated with, it is his seemingly endless struggles with addiction. Downey is understandably through discussing his past challenges. In 2015, he famously walked out of an interview when requests to stay off that particular topic were ignored by the British interviewer. Uh, well, I'm just asking questions, that's all. Right. Okay, that's okay. Bye. 
Explaining why he did so to Howard Stern, Downey was characteristically blunt, saying, The assumption is that there's a button that because you've sat down there, you're going to be scrutinized. What I have to do in the future is I just have to give myself permission to say I need to distance myself from this clown. If you or anyone you know needs help with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.